being an agent is is a is a leverage point to put yourself in position to do things much better and like you know a much easier passive income rental properties other businesses whatever the case may be because when january 1st hit it went from a million on the year to zero for the year i was like oh shit i'm screwed like i gotta i gotta climb this million dollar mountain again take your database put it in a, a system to send a weekly email on the same day of the week forever until that foundation is set there's no need to get more leads because you they're gonna you're gonna get them talk to them maybe sell them something but then they're gonna forget about you so when you put the property on the market okay the property being on the market it's the moment that property hits the market we're collecting data now if someone if a buyer calls you off the sign or off of zillow go to the ends of the earth to try to help that buyer buy that listing yes good cool how you guys doing good very good 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 um <clears throat> I would imagine you guys are here because you want to multiply your business, make more money, et cetera, right? Yes. You want to learn something new. You're looking for some uh, golden nuggets, some special little thing, um, some like one little thing that might change your business completely and take it to the next level. That's good. Um, are you guys, is, I'm sure there's people here that don't know who I am, right? No, probably not. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Um, well, let me just go ahead and first off and just apologize because I'm really direct, <laughs> especially in these kind of meetings, because this is kind of a, for me, I eat, sleep and, you know, breathe this um, as far as real estate, the market, agent, success, et cetera. Um, and so for me to be able to sleep at night, I have to tell you exactly how I feel at all times so that I know that I did everything I could do to put you in the best position possible. You know, otherwise, what are we doing here? Um, I have to feel that way, or I'm going to walk away from this thinking I didn't do you guys justice. I sugarcoated it, et cetera. So let me go on record and just apologize up front. Uh, I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, but I am going to tell you what I think. And I'm, I'm a very get it done right now kind of person. Um, a lot of people, you know, they look at, you know, prospecting and cold calling and even making videos on social and all these things. And they just kind of hesitate and think about it and, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why? Can't, let's let's get the job done now. The only thing between you guys and a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Can we all agree? Yeah. So the question becomes, how long do you want to spread those thousands of conversations out before you get to the million a year? For me, I want to do it right now. How, how quickly can I have these thousands of conversations so that I can get to the million a year so I can move on to bigger and better things? I, I, would, I would assure you that you all don't want to be real estate agents forever. This is, this is a, being an agent is, is, a, is a leverage point to put yourself in position to do things much better. And like, you know, a much easier passive income, rental properties, other businesses, whatever the case may be. Some people get stuck in grinding their whole life. I know two agents that passed away making cold calls. They died from old age and they made calls to the day they died. That's not how I want to live. And I believe it comes from a place of not realize or not. They, they lost the ambition to go to the next level. You know, when I made a million dollars a year the first time, I was like, how do I get out of this? Because when January 1st hit, my, it went from a million on the year to zero for the year. I was like, oh, shit, I'm screwed. Like, I got I to gotta climb this million dollar mountain again. That's when I was like, OK, I'm going to start coaching, writing, speaking, building other businesses, buying rental properties. So today I want to talk about your career. Okay, because I can tell you how to get listings. I can tell you how to have a great 2024. But what's even more interesting to me is what your what your accomplishments over the next five or ten years, and the the, the what, your accomplishments over the next decade are going to be dependent on the seeds you plant now and next year. So while we're thinking about the income we're going to make in 2024, that's great. But I'm thinking about all the seeds that you planted making that income. That's going to make you 10 times that in 2027. And, and most agents don't even think like that. And, and this is why they don't do things like the weekly email. So when you, when you think about your database, 
okay? And how you remarket to your database. If there's not a simple scalable system in place to remarket to your database, what are we doing here? Because you can't build up a, a compounded business. You, you don't make a million dollars a year from the leads you got the year you made a million dollars. Doesn't happen. It, the million dollars a year comes from the compounding relationships that you built five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, that compounds into that sixth year added with the new lead you got that sixth year. Got it? And if you don't have something in place that helps you compound those relationships into this massive business over the next three to five, what are we doing? You're not even trying to build a career. You're just a salesperson that's going to sell forever. So you look at your database and you think, okay, what are the different ways that I can remarket to my database? That's easy, simple, scalable. Okay. Let's run through it. All right. You got email, you got text messaging, you got uh, direct mail. You can call them. You got social media. What else? What other ways can you remarket to your database so that they never forget who you are? Client events. Okay. Client events. Property values, like your what your property thing is. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries, home anniversaries. How are you doing that, though? Through text messaging, email, right? That's the reason why you're contacting them. But I'm talking about the actual uh, method mm -hmm. of contact. I usually do it via text. Okay. Snail so text. So Okay, so we're, we're okay. I've already mentioned those direct mail, text, oh, door, door, mail. door knock. <laughs> yeah. get door knock. You're going to door knock your clients? <laughs> yeah. That, that could be, that could be okay. I'm going to go door knock my clients. Okay. Door knocking. Here's like my point. Said, not very scalable, but yeah. yes. It's, it's, okay. <laughs> Here, here's my point. Let, let's look at all those, all those different options to remarket to our database so they never forget who we are. <laughs> if you look at door knocking, well, that's not scalable. What if you have 5,000 people? How are you going to door knock 5,000 people? It goes for phone calls as well. How are you going to call 5,000 people? So at a point that becomes non-scalable. So those are out. Direct mail. If you had 10,000 people, how expensive is that? Not realistic. That's out. Text messaging is possible, but it's kind of odd because to send out a bulk text, it doesn't come from your cell phone number. It comes from either a five-digit number or some other smart number, which is fine. It's doable. It's doable, but... You know, text messaging is used in business. I use it in business. A lot of you probably get my text, but it's still kind of an intimate place more than a more than a business place. Like email, you get a hundred spam messages a day, all from businesses trying to sell stuff to you, versus text messaging, you don't get that many spam texts. It's more so for friends and family still. Okay. Social media. You can't upload your database to social media, and make sure every single person in your database sees your content. Only about 5% of your followers actually see your content. That's out. So what are we left with? Email. Do we know of any platform that we can stay relevant to our clients that's simple, scalable, other than email, that's better than email? Okay. So we just solved the world's problems when it comes to remarketing to our database, okay? So now what do we do? Well, we do a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, okay? How many ever eight, How many ever clients are in your database? This is step one. Take your database, put it in a, a system to send a weekly email on the same day of the week forever. Until that foundation is set, there's no need to get more leads because you, you're going to get them, talk to them, maybe sell them something, but then they're going to forget about you. If you're not doing something to, to, to make sure no one ever forgets who you are, there's people in your database that are under contract with other agents right now because they forgot about you. Not because they didn't want to do business with you, just because they forgot about you. So, so yes, do social media, do text messaging, do direct mail and all, that, all those things, but make the foundation of your remarketing to your database the weekly email. That's it. Now, when you realize the power of this, Say you have 300 people, now it's a race to try to get that to 1,000 people getting the weekly email. When they see it on the same day of the week, every week, they're like, oh my God, this is the most dependable, hardworking, consistent agent I know. I'm going to use them every time I do a deal. That's what happens with this. Now, we talked about career, right? So think about this. If the goal is over the next five years to get this database to five to 10,000 people in your market who are getting the weekly email, guess what? You don't have to prospect another day in your life. You've built your career. 
So, so this is the dream. Bust your ass to talk to thousands of people in your market, the thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations that need to be had to make a million bucks a year. Get through that as quick as possible. Build the database. Do the weekly email. Get to the point where you're selling the exact amount of homes you want to sell every year, and then you never have to make another cold call again in your life. How quickly can we get that done to where we can get to the part we have residual business? Where we're making the amount of money we want to make. And now we can build other businesses, buy rental properties, and sell because we want to, not because we have to. And then eventually phase out of sales altogether right off into the sunset. This is what I want you guys to be thinking about, the big picture. And right now, with the market being down for the 10-year cycle, we have a, there's a 10-year housing cycle. The last time it was down this low with the number of transactions was 2008. We're going to have the same amount of transactions as we had in 2008 this year. Okay, We're at the down moment of the 10-year cycle in housing, and we're at the, the down moment of the yearly housing cycle. Every fall, prices soften. <laughs> New listings come up, days in the market go up every single fall. So this is the like trifecta right now. This is like the, the greatest moment in your life when it comes to being an agent. Because this is the down moment of the 10-year and the down moment of the yearly housing cycle. And you can actually stack a little bit of inventory, right? 40% of homes are selling in less than two weeks. But what's happening to the other 60%? They're sitting there longer. Days in the market rising a little bit. Not back where it was pre-pandemic, but it's it's rising. Happens every fall. Nothing to be alarmed about, by the way. If prices soften, that's okay. A lot of you guys are like, oh, my listing's not selling. Great. <laughs> it means you got a listing that's going to sit there. Like You can stack your inventory a little bit. We need a little breathing room, guys. All this stuff is positive. Right now, you need to be going all in on stacking listings between now and the first of the year. You should be... Your, your January, what most people get excited about January 1st, you should be in that same mindset, October 1st or September 1st. Like, all right, here's my 2024 because it's a three-month lag business. If you're going to have a great 2024, it means you did great 12 months out of the year, not nine. If you start January 1st, then you're missing out on January, February, March. You're not really going to see the, the, the harvest of those, of those actions till April. You got to start now if you want all 12 months to be maximized. And 2024 is going to be amazing. I don't know if rates are going to come down because it's an election year and we're going to finally beat the war on inflation. I don't know if rates go to 10 plus percent. I don't know if they come down to five. I don't know. But I know this. People have to buy and sell. And investors will buy and sell. And it never goes to zero. Ever goes to zero. Ever goes to zero. Prices never go to zero. Number of transactions never go to zero. And if you're out there doing what you need to do to talk to people and get through these thousands of conversations, you're going to be the one closing the deals on the way to the million a year. But if you're not willing to do what you signed up for, when you get your real estate license, like the whole thing is predicated on you talking to people you do and don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. And like you, you're, you don't want to do that. No, I, I don't, I don't want to succeed. You know, I just want to like see if like if I could like, you know, do a deal a year. Okay. That's on you. That's not on me. All right. I think that's a good start. Let's let's do some QA. <laughs> okay. Let's go round table or something. Let's do some QA because I want where I can bring you guys the most value is what you're having trouble with in your business. I can sit here and blab and I can, uh, uh, you know, I could go off for two hours straight about stuff, but if it's not, it's not pertaining to what you're having trouble with in your business, then it's not doing either one of us any good. Right? So feel free to unmute, feel free to tell me what you're having trouble with. Feel free to give me your questions and tell me what's going on in your business so that I can help you guys today. Are you going out and starting these conversations or are they coming up organically? Well, I mean, if you're going to sit around waiting on conversations to happen, you're backing up. <laughs> you're going backwards, all right? I need to talk to people back to back to back to back all day long, and you're not going to do that organic. Okay, well, this is what I'm getting at. So then how are you doing yeah. that? Well, I okay, I can tell you how I do it, but it not, might not be the best way for you to do it. 
See, th this is where the problem is in the industry. The mm -hmm. coaches and brokerages want to say, here's how you get leads. Here's lead gen. Here's how you should do it. When that may not work for that person. Me, you guys can probably tell my personality. I don't care about anything. I'll call Ooh. anyone <laughs> at any moment. Okay. And talk to them about anything. It doesn't, I don't care. I have, I have zero lack of confidence when it comes to making a call, making a friend, and developing a, a business relationship with someone, putting them in my database, letting them get the weekly email, call me when they're ready to do something in two years. I'm more than happy to do that. Not everybody is willing to cold call. And I don't even refer to it as cold calling, guys. You, these are people in your market. Do you guys understand that you have something in common? Like you live close to each other during the same the same era? Like, like when you think about the 8 billion people on earth, what are the chances that one of those 8 billion people live like within 30 minutes of you? Almost Whenever. nothing. Okay. Almost nothing. And when you multiply the, everyone who's ever lived on earth and everybody that will live on earth, how many billions or trillions of people is that? So what are the chances that somebody not only lives close to you, but during the same time that you're alive, it's ridiculous. It's like you have this connection with every single person in your market and you want to act like, this is a stranger. They're not. They're your friends. They're your neighbors. They're part of your community. You need to think of this as you're a volunteer worker doing community outreach to see what in the world you can do to help people. You're, you're a, this is a service. This isn't sales. This is what it is that you want to do, ma'am or sir. And how can I help you do it? This is what I do for a living. I help people buy and sell real estate. Are you looking to buy or sell something? Do you have an agent that you're already working with? I would love to help you through this. You don't want my help? That's okay. Have a good day. Call me if you do. I'm here. If you ever have questions, I'm happy to help. Um, I travel three times a month and speak to agents. Most of those I pay out of my pocket. I'm paying money to go speak. Okay. I'm not making money. I'm paying money to speak. Why? Because I know that these agents will do business with me in five years I, on what I don't know, but they will. And so I don't care about money. I care about brand. I care about m my business. I care about every single person knowing who I am, what I do, and that I'm here to help. And it's the same thing with real estate. I, on my weekly email, I always did, uh, like I, it's still there. I have closed sales, all the closed sales. And agents used to look at me like I was crazy for sending out the clip. You feel like it's warm. It's because it was through a lead channel. But if you had the same confidence that you use when you talk to these buyer leads, when you talk to sellers, matter of fact, if you just, if you just cold call sellers and pretend like they're buyer leads that you paid for, you'd, you'd crush it. It's, it's just your mentality behind it. It's really easy stuff. Um, Oh, uh, next question. Angie, do you have a question? It, 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 did she get back on here? I, okay. I am back, yeah. yeah. Well, I was curious how you fit all this into your day. I mean. What am I, I fitting into my I day? I struggle with the consistency. And where you know, do you get the uh, content for the, the weekly emails? You know what it is, Angela? It comes down to efficiency. So for eight years in a row, I sold 100 properties as a single agent with no buyer agent, no listing agent, just an admin and me. I was the listing agent. I was the showing agent. I was the everything agent, right? I went to all the closings and did all the stuff. But I only showed property like three or four times a month. Why? Because I'm focused on property owners. It, it's it, See, even the fact that I chose property owners makes my life easier and my quality of life better. Why? Because I'm creating an efficiency in my business. Why did I not do social media for my real estate business? By the way, I would now if I were starting all over in today's world. But why did I not? Because weekly email and, and direct mail and phone calls worked great for me. And I didn't need anything else jamming me up. A lot of us are trying to do like 15 things and our quality of life sucks. Plus, we're going after only buyers, which really makes our life suck. Because now we're just riding around town all day. See, everyone's making money. Every, everyone on this call makes money at seven o'clock at night. The question is, are you at home eating dinner with your family, chilling? Because, you know, without a worry in the world, because eight of your 21 listings are being shown by agents who do YouTube videos. Or are you the one on YouTube trying to attract buyers to your business, showing property all hours of the night? 
or have buyer agents that you have to give 50% of the commission to. These are all your choices. So I could dig into your specific business, Angela, and I could say, I could, I could ask you a ton of questions. I could understand everywhere you are. And I could say, oh, well, you should mark this, this, and this off because it's incredibly inefficient and it's, com it's completely sucking all of your time and it's not moving the needle. Get rid of that. Go all in on these things and your life would be a million times better. So I was really good from day one of, of, of recognizing inefficiency activities versus efficient activities and throwing away things that were inefficient. Why? Because I wanted an easy life. I wanted to make a million bucks a year and not have, not be, you know, losing my mind at the very end before I stepped out of production, like for the last three years of production, I was literally working 20 hours a week in my real estate business, doing the hundred deals a year. You're like, Oh my God. The thing is, is it's only two deals a week. Number one. And these are all repeat, bit, repeat clients. At that point, I was not prospecting. Remember, guys, you prospect, you build the database, and then you don't prospect anymore. All I did was a weekly email and getting two deals a week, two deals a week. So like all this stuff I'm telling you, I've done it, and I've seen other agents do it. You, you, you really bust your ass. You work 15 hours a day you know, for five years, and then you build it, and then you're done. Now, you can drag those thousands of conversations if you want to do it organically. You can drag those conversations out over 30 years and die making calls, never get out, never be able to get out of sales because you make $250 a year and you never make more than that. Or you can say, you know what? Give me a phone book. I'm just going to call every single property under my market and let them know, hey, I'm here. I don't care if you buy or sell or not. I'm here to help you if you do. I'd love to stay in touch with you. What's up? That, that's it. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just reaching out to see what I could do to help you today. If nothing, I get it. I'd love to work with you in the future. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Cool. What's a good email? Bam. Build that weekly email to the moon. This is so simple, guys. It's ridiculous. It, 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 it just, it, <laughs> it'll make you cringe. It's, it's so simple, but we, but we overcomplicate the process. I don't know. Um, do you have, any suggestions on content for the weekly email? Because I feel like that's generally a, a struggle for those that are not gifted with Gab. Um, or go to go to it. It's super simple. I have complete training, free training, a uh, four week uh, weekly template where you can use the four week uh, the the four different templates just over and over every month. Just go to startmyweeklyemail.com. You can see you can see every email I actually did for the last year. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. There's a, a link to get the four week template. There's a there's a video of training where I actually do an email in front of you, screen share, and, and actually create the create the uh, email right in front of you. Real simple stuff. the The reason why the weekly email wins is because it's every single week on the same day, so it shows consistency and dependability. And it's my opinion. Uh, number number two, it's local information only. It's not generic. It's not national. It's not how to cook shrimp at Tufay. It's <laughs> local, real market information. And it's my opinions on it. So you have to sit down and you have to write this email. Sorry, you have to work a little bit. You know, my bad. You know, you can't use okay. chat GPT or like some like generic company to write, you know, a BS email that's not going to get any action for you. People want to get to know you through these emails. Show them your personality, right? Tell them what you think about the market. Here's the market stats. Here's what I think about it. Here's a great restaurant. Here's my experience there. Here's a new development coming in. Here's what I think about it. Tell them what you think. That's what wins on social. That's what wins in email. That's what, well, that's what wins in marketing because why? People want to hear a story, right? They want to follow your story. After they've been getting the weekly email for like three years, like they followed your life. How do you feel about... Um, shoot, I just lost my train of thought. Let me go back to, um, oh, how do you feel about niche marketing? I hear a lot of people talk about niche marketing and I kind of go back and forth because I feel like we're a small area and we should be doing broader marketing, um, more so than niche, but also listening to your emails that would help with niche marketing. Cause if you have a certain interest or something like that, that would give you a talking point that you can kind of gear your emails towards and around. That would There's be like plenty of talking points. 
you don't have a you, you could do an email every day like there's no lack of talking it. point <laughs> what it feels like a struggle though it feels like a struggle because that's what you're telling yourself you know there's new listings every day you know how much people love new listings People would open up that email every day if you just sent out new listings every day. People would open it up just to see new listings. They would be like, oh my God, thank you. They'd watch it like a hawk. If you sent out new listings and like your thought of the day every single day, you'd crush it. But you don't have to do that. You can do the same day of the week, every week, once a week. Let's make it real simple. It's not due every day. This is you once a week. Once every seven days, right? That's not hard. Here's the restaurant of the month. Here's the deal of the month. Here's market stats of the month. Here's news of the month. Just do that over and over and over again. So it's not you, consistent in what you're sending out. It's just consistent in sending it out. A hundred percent. And you can be consistent. My four week email template, week one, mm -hmm. stats of the month, market stats. I've got it. I've got in the template. I've got number of transactions, new listings, price, all that stuff. I have it there for you laid out. Um, stats of the month, restaurant of the month for week two. You know, picture the restaurant. Great restaurant. I went there, had the <laughs> had the shrimp etouffee. It was great. Service was great. Reply back for your chance to win a gift card. Tons of people hit you back. You get into one-on-one -on -one conversations with those people via email. Pick a winner. People love it. Do it once a month. Week three, deal of the month. A great listing that you feel like is just a good deal. Send it out. Um, week four is news of the month, like a festival coming, a new development, something happened politically, uh, something, a subdivision, whatever. Great ideas. It, it it's all there in that four week template thing. It's just laid out for you where it's just really easy. Just to like pop, pop, pop. I put the link to that in the chat. And then we have a question in the chat. Uh, Anisha is asking if you use constant contact. Yep. That's what I use. How do you feel that's different than MailChimp? And why do you prefer that? Much, one? much more user-friendly makes a much better looking email. Um, just easier to use. Cool. Jerry, do you yeah. use that what you use? Yep. Yeah. yeah, Jerry uses that. Jerry is that a, a zero to diamond right here. Yeah. <laughs> I went through your coaching the first time you put out that group coaching. Wow. Or the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. So I went through that. Cool. Uh, very. Oh, 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 with one of my coaches or whatever? Correct, yeah. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Cool. So that was awesome. And <laughs> follow you. All the time. Yep. <laughs> Online. Not in a creepy way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, like back in the day, that would be like, I'm gonna call the cops, but today in today's <laughs> world, it's like, oh, thank you so much for you know being such a creep. <laughs> <laughs> but this, he, he does do the weekly email, so he's kind of our Ricky Carruth in-house yeah. expert. So we ask him questions about the emails and stuff. So wow, and, you guys have a Ricky Carruth in-house expert. That's awesome. We do. That's yeah. Jerry. And the weekly email is pretty successful because Dude, I mean, I've got I've got agents that make millions of dollars using that. Yeah. I've never mm -hmm. heard of anyone that uses it that that that's like, oh, this doesn't work or no, but you know, you hear these coaching programs like that doesn't work, this doesn't work. And sure, people have said that about cold calls and stuff, but the weekly email, I've never had anybody say, Oh, this this <laughs> this is stupid, this doesn't work. Go ahead, Angela. Just curious if there's a day of the week that you think is best to send that or if it just depends the on the same our... one every week. Doesn't matter which day, just the same. <laughs> no, whatever you like. I like Wednesday because I feel like they're oh they're back from the weekend. After the weekend, they're trying to get going. Towards the end of the week, they're like, you know, let's hurry up and get to the weekend. I think midweek is like they're kind of like in the groove a little. I don't know. People have different opinions. It doesn't matter. Is constant contact like the weekly email? So it it's automatic. You just set up that email. Don't you so, wish? Don't you wish it was automatic? Yeah. You have to no, go it, in. I'm sorry, it's Casey. All her numbers. It, but you have to go out? in. What's that? Like we make the email, but then of course does it you do. How how else are you going to put your thoughts on an email about how you're feeling that day about the market or about this or that? How else are you going to do? How are how are you going to do that automatically? No, absolutely. I get that. What's constant contact? Is this an app or just? It's a platform. To send it's a out platform where you put email. all of your contacts awesome. in. And then you uh -huh. make the email right then. And uh -huh. uh, let's see. Well, we can, I'm sure maybe we can do a class or I can just tune into it. I just look, listen, sure look, 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 check this out. Jerry, Jerry can do a class. <laughs> Here, yeah, check Jerry. this out. Let me, 
Let's see. Is this it? Meeting group chat. All right. Here. Go to this right here. Casey, check this out. This link I just put in the chat. Go there. There's a there's literally a an hour plus training video on that link where I tell you everything about it, how to do it. I make an email right in front of you. There's a link right there to start an account, get the four week uh, template. Uh, there's 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 one year worth of my emails at the bottom, which you can look and see everything that I've done over the last year every week. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That's what I was thinking. I figured it was on your link too, so I must didn't say anything. It's all right there. Change your name on the email. <laughs> hey, Ricky. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we've been talking a lot about methods. If I can just talk about attitude, and maybe you can comment on this, but I see so many agents that when the market changes, they don't change with it. Yeah. And what they do is they fight it. They fight it. And what I've been doing has been working. So I, I'll do more of what I've been doing. Yeah. It's not working now. And then they get discouraged. They turn into Eeyore's. And they quit coming to office meetings and participating. And then they say, I guess I'll go get a real job. So can you can you talk about that aspect of people's thinking, stinking thinking? And yeah, because not well, here's the thing though. Is it Scott? Yeah. But here here's the thing. If you're if you're a novice, if you're inexperienced, if you've never been through a big market swing, if you feel like you know, if you've only been in the business for a couple of years and you never experienced a big like hard swing like we're going through, then you don't know that you have to you have to you have to, uh, you know, go with the flow of the market. You feel like you can keep doing the same thing. This will blow over and it'll be all good. Um, so you have to go through a moment like that before you learn that that you have to go. with. So like, you know, when I went through 2008, I got licensed in 2002, lost everything in 08. I was homeless, sleeping in my car, bankrupt, roofing houses, serving tables, I always had two jobs. I've always said some of these people that say, oh, I can't afford a house. I'm priced out of a house. Do you have two jobs? Because if you don't, then don't come talk to me until you have two jobs. And then let's then let's talk. I've, mm -hmm. I have two jobs now. I've always had two jobs. I was making $300 a week as a teenager roofing for my dad. OK, nobody's going to sit here and tell me, oh, you know, the middle class or, you know, blah, blah. I don't care about any of that. If I can get where I am. Yeah. Does it take time? Sure. But going through 2008, I did the same thing. I kept trying to fight it. I just kept doing the same thing. Guess what? I lost everything. Well, I, I left real estate. I didn't, I didn't sell anything between 05 and 08. I got back in 2008, which was the best time. It was the best time. Why? Because Listen. prices were 50% off. You know how easy it was to sell real estate in 2008? It was ridiculous. Buyers were everywhere. You want to say they're not? There was 4 million transactions. Same amount of transactions as this year happened in 2008. They were the buyers were everywhere and they were like, oh, I can take my they're on a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh, well, I could I, let me pick out the best out of these 30 properties and I'll make a low ball offer and I'll get it. Um, But I had to lose everything and go through that to understand how to handle a big market swing. And so some of these agents who aren't adapting to this to this shift, there might go through some it might be really rough on them, but it's much needed for them to understand how this really works in the real world and then make adjustments and get ready and prepare. Cause ever since 2008, I've been preparing for this swing. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I've been preparing for this for over a decade. So when you guys that are struggling, when you come out the other side, you'll be like, oh, okay, I know how to handle this next time. Closings never stop. And you know, deals never stop and business is unlimited and all that. Nothing ever goes to zero you'll start preparing for the next swing that's going to happen in the next 10, 15 years, and you'll crush it when that swing happens, right? So it's hard to tell somebody, oh, you need to go with the flow of the market when they don't even understand what that means. They're going to have to go through it themselves and learn <laughs> from the life experiences. And sometimes yeah. they leave the business and they never come back, you know? Well, a lot of agents create their own market just by what comes out of their mouth and what they tell their clients. You, you, you In this business... You create your own demand. You can create demand out of thin air, guys. You know, like talk to five people that you see walking down the road and say, hey, you know what? Uh, nice to meet you. If I had a really great smoking hot deal on a rental property, would you be interested? I guarantee you one or two out of five is going to say, yeah, what you got? Oh, well, I don't have anything right this second, but things come across my desk constantly. What do you like? Single family, multi duplexes, fourplexes, commercial, industrial. What do you like? 
you know, take down their criteria, go find them something, call them, sell it to them. Like you create, you can create out of thin air business, but we're too scared to talk to people, even though that's why you got, that's, that's the reason you got your license to talk to people and help them buy and sell real estate. Am I not here? Am I, am, or is there nothing happening or am I just not hearing you guys? <laughs> I have a question. I'm like, what's okay. going on? Processing. Go ahead. I'm, I'm new in the market. I mean, three years. So this is the first time I've ever been in a down market. When I came in, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, so I, I have my, a listing that has sat longer on the market than anything I've ever had. And it just makes me squirm because I feel like I'm not, you know, somehow doing enough. Um, what else so, can you do? <laughs> I don't know. You know, social media. Posts, this is the game. This is the game that, that we play. Stuff. This is the game that we play with ourselves, right? It's a very dangerous game because it's non-existent. Once you price the property and we put it on the market on MLS, guess what? Every single buyer sees it. They're looking on their phones. They search online. They drive around. Every single buyer that might could be possibly interested in that sees it right then. It's not about us doing more ads and running more postcards and making more calls for it. They all see it. Right. So now what's the problem? If it's in front of every buyer, what's the problem now? Not low enough for the current market, I guess. Bingo. Bingo. So when you put the property on the market, okay, the property being on the market is the moment that property hits the market, we're collecting data now. Okay. If it's not being shown, that's data. If it hasn't sold, that's data. If it's being shown twice, that's data. If other listings around it have listed and they're not selling, or maybe they sold quick, data. Data in the market is happening within the listing and around the listing the moment you put it on the market that we have to pay attention to. We uh, listed a house. I wanted to list it at $599. Uh, we listed it for, for $614, I think. Big mistake, right? I told them big mistake, but we did it. That's what they wanted to do. At the time, there were only two listings, much bigger houses in the 800s. Nothing else in the neighborhood. I thought, well, you know, 600, it's a smaller house, but hey, that sounds good looking at everything. Plus interest rates were like 6% back there, uh, not 6%, yeah, 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 6%, 6 6.5%. And, um, you know, there wasn't a sale for two years. We didn't have much data to go by. But guess what? Since we did that, we haven't had any offers. Several people have looked at it. Other properties have come on way cheaper and sold within a couple of weeks. Now I have data I didn't have when we listed it. Same thing with you with this listing. You now have data you didn't have when you listed it, right? You test the market, okay? At this price, now it's been there for so long, it hasn't sold. You go to the sellers and say, hey, here we are. Now we know. What do you want to do, right? I mean, the truth is the truth. We're at 600 and really based on, every, no, they've got it down to 590 now. And based on everything I'm seeing, we should have listed it at 550 based on everything around it. So I don't know if we'll get there or not. They'll probably, you know, take it down, realist it with another agent or something like that. Who knows which way it'll go. But please don't get so emotionally attached to a listing. Listings are going to come and go. Clients are going to come and go. You do your best to take care of them, treat them like family, do everything you can do. But that's all you can do. You can't do anymore. And if, if they decide you didn't do a good job, then, I mean, you know you did the best you could do. You can't do anymore. So if your best isn't good enough for them, then maybe they need to go find another agent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I've sent them emails and, you know, explained that <clears throat> they're still high for this market, but they just keep, you know, oh, we'll go down just this little bit, just yep. this little bit. So um, it, I guess you're right. It's, it's in their hands. Cause I've been very honest with them. And it is in their hands. Are you, are you, are you yeah. suggesting a price? Yes, I have suggested mm. they reduce their price. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. And like I said, they, they've come down like in little inchworm segments. <laughs> yeah. So that's what they do. Generating they're, enough they're, interest. Cause they're continuing to test the market. You know, they want to keep seeing, you know, like, will we, if we lower a little bit, will something happen? Will something happen? Will something happen? Listen, you know how you sell that listing? The best way to sell that listing? Have you figured it out? Um, no, I mean, I, I'm trying to get people inside of it mm. because it here's the best, way, here's the best way to sell it. <laughs> the best way to sell a listing is to forget about it. Mm -hmm. 
you can forget it. You, you've so already yeah. done. You've <laughs> already done the work. The work is over. The market is what the market is. It's either going to sell or it isn't. That's not. That's mm -hmm. not in your hands anymore. It was in your hands to convert them into a listing, but now it's not. It's out of your. If you could convert that, you'd have already done it. That's not in your hands. So why are we worried about something that's out of our control? Now let's get back to what we can control. So so what we do, the way to sell that one is to forget about it and do what? Get five more now, now, <laughs> yesterday, and five more the next day, five more the next day. That's what you should be spending your mental capacity on instead of how do I sell this listing? You're never going to sell that listing. If someone, if a buyer calls you off the sign or off a of Zillow, go to the ends of the earth to try to help that buyer buy that listing. Yes. But trying to like make the market be something it's not, it's never going to do you any good. But you know what will do you good? Five more listings. Ricky, okay. do you see, do you suggest 70, about 70% of the, your listings will sell Angela and about 30% of them won't they'll decide not to sell it or it's too high <laughs> or they back out. Right. So don't walk into every listing thinking this is a deal. It's a deal 70% of the time and you better have more listings. Very true. Very true. But, but with that being said, you know, you're saying talk to a thousand people. If I don't have an assistant, that just gives me so much anxiety to think that what? I won't be able to fulfill my, you know, promises to all those people. You, you've already fulfilled the promise. What do you mean? What promise are you, what are you telling these people? <laughs> just to give you know my best to each person you did so. <laughs> what else can you do i guess if i i'm concerned if i have so many people actually returning my calls that i wouldn't be able to keep up oh oh this, oh this is this this is this is the class this is classic here this is the classic <laughs> number one that'd be a good problem to have if you have more people calling you than you can handle okay you're gonna crumb your river because you have too many leads okay <laughs> Um, but the second thing is it's like when I used to put out on my email, cause my email goes out to 19,000 and 7,500 open it up every week. And I used to put out there, Hey, I want to have lunch with you. Like, just let me know when, and like, I'm there, I'm paying for it. I want to have lunch. I want to hang out. I used to send that out all the time and all the agents and stuff. They're like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm never going to do that because I can't afford a hundred lunches. Guess how many lunches I used to have? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Nobody called me on it. Just the fact that I offered it, though, makes everybody feel like, wow, Ricky's here if I want to have lunch with him. Yeah, I had some lunch with some clients and stuff, you know, here and there. But you you don't like nobody ever like they don't all call you at once. It's just enough to here here. OK, I want to go to you next. But Angel, just to finish up, you can handle you can handle so many deals at once. OK. I would imagine you're not full yet. Like you could handle more deals, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Angela, are you there? Yes. Oh, there you are. Okay. 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 You, you can handle. Oh, my internet might have. Y'all can hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're back. You can handle so many deals, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> could you handle more deals than what you have right this second? Yes. Okay. Can we make enough calls? To where we get to the place where you're as much as you can handle and then talk about maybe slowing down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, get it's to more where you, mental. Get to where you filled your cup up where it's as much as you can handle and then think about, okay, let me just stay right here. I don't really want more than this because this is as much as I can handle, but let me just, let me at least stay right here. Anisha. Anisha. <laughs> Anisha. <laughs> um. So I'm with Angela, like I have listings, I have some higher end ones around here that have that they've pulled and there's nothing I can do after a year of sitting and they're not taking my advice. But what I still do is once a week, send a message and just say, Hey, I'm thinking about you guys. And maybe once a month, I call the older gentleman and we have coffee together. So I don't care when they list next time. It could be in a month or next spring or, I mean, I'm still keeping that relationship good but i have to kind of like forget about it like you said do you suggest like a once a week check-in just a hey how for, are you doing um, for people that you? aren't listed or are listed um they were listed with me you did, they that, were listen, my list the, 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 this comes back to the weekly email you're talking about a weekly text the weekly email does all this for you okay it, it does all the heavy lifting where you could have five thousand people 
that cancel their listing and you still hit them, that they, they and 90% of those people will see it in their inbox. You know, 5% of the people that follow you see your content online. 90% of the people that you email see it in their inbox. Um, that does all the heavy lifting for you. If you want to, on top of that, text them and say, hey, thinking about you, let's have coffee. Awesome. If you want to call them once a year, call your top 200, send Christmas cards, do client appreciations, do uh, make videos online. Great. But do the weekly email. Have that be the, the cornerstone. That's the foundation. And then, and then, and then everything else is like extra credit. Do you split your emails because where we not are at all? Here... It's not scalable okay. then. Okay. If okay. you're doing a different email to this list than to this list, now we're right back to not being scalable. Yeah. Okay. Now we have to make two different emails. It takes more time. Next thing you know, you're doing three. No, one email to your entire database. That way it's one, it's done, it's easy, it's scalable. Ricky, could you talk a little bit? When you went back and started in 2008, like how long did it take you to get to a million from there? 2017, so nine years. Okay. And just so I can by, kind of get a... By 2014, I was doing 100 deals a year, though. Mm -hmm. just, just the price point, point wasn't high enough to yield a million out of the 100 deals. Price point was like 400,000, uh, 400, 350, 400,000. So it was like 40 mil. Um. Guys, we got 20 people plus whoever's in the office and stuff. Like, what problems are you guys running into? You know, what questions do you have in your business? I think a lot of us had kind of similar questions when we started. Like, what do we do? How do we get through this? And you gave us a lot of information, which was basically you put it in a nutshell. Do this, stay consistent, and this is something you can measure. And something I've always been told was don't do an activity in real estate that you can't measure because if you can't measure it, you can never see what the results are. You're just spinning a hamster wheel. So I think you solved a lot of things in a very short period of time. Like you said, you're very direct. And I think it was to the point. So it might be a little bit like, okay, let us absorb, process, and implement. Uh -huh. Just so I can um, get a sizability, how big is your market? I know you're in Alabama, but... Are you in, in, you're in Dallas? Oh, Dallas? Well, that's oh, you're from Alabama. Right. Okay. But they also have a ton of agents there. Right. What do you, what do you, I, like, what are y'all talking about? He, wants, he wanted to know how big your market was when you were selling 100. Oh, um, I'm in Gulf Shores, Alabama. It's where I live and grew up, and I still live here. Um, our population is like 25,000 people. I love this. Yeah. So you're still in outside of, I'm assuming you're selling outside that town as well. Just no. <laughs> um, you like when I picked subdivisions to call, I would pick subdivision to condo complexes that were like, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes from me. You know, I wouldn't pick something an hour away. I did deals <laughs> that were out. I did deals that were an hour away. Sure. Well, when you're new, you take whatever you can get. You know, Are you gonna you're gonna you're gonna you wave a check in front of my face. I'll do it, I'll do whatever I gotta do. I used to roof houses. I don't care. I'll hang from a ladder upside down. It doesn't matter to me. I'll drive two hours to do something. Um, but as you build your business and you want to become more and more efficient, you know, then you kind of stick around the house. I remembered my question. Do you guys still have USDA loans available around there? Because your population, I was curious if that no, made any sort of effect in no, the market. No freaking idea. No clue. <laughs> yeah, you know. Ricky, I'd, I'd, be interested, I'd be interested in hearing your dialogue when you go on a listing appointment and they've interviewed another agent who gives them a false higher price to get the listing. Well, I mean, sometimes the, um, it just depends on the property owner because sometimes the uh, property owner is going to go with that higher price because they're like, Oh, let's just try it out. Um, sometimes I have to list it at that higher price to get it because they're going to go with sometimes somebody that goes to the higher price. If I want to take that listing, the thing about overpriced listings are I take them all day, every day. Why? Well, I'm setting expectations with the seller number one that this we're just testing the market. I I'm pretty sure that this is not going to sell. I tell them when we list it. Um, but with over, you know how many listings I sold that I thought would never sell. Like I sold listings in a day I thought would never sell, and listings I I I, I uh what's the saying I came up with? Listings I thought would sell in a day never sold, and listings I thought would never sell sell sold in a day. 
Like listings I net they were so overpriced, I never thought they would sell. Literally sold in a week. Several of them. And like agents would turn those listings down or whatever, and like, I'll take it. And then boom, there just happened to be a buyer that wanted that property and sold in a week. You don't know. You're not the god of this, guys. You're not the god of prices. Comps and comps are comps are comps, but how do you think prices go up? There's always something that sells more than the comps. It's up to the buyer, you know, and the seller and what they agree to. And really strange things have happened. Um, you know, I could tell you so many stories, but normally what happens over time is the seller reduces it and the market kind of goes up a little bit. It meets in the middle somewhere and you do a deal. Um, one thing I always did was never let a listing expire. I never let listings expire unless I tell them when I get the listing, I'm this listing lasts forever and you can cancel it anytime for any reason. You're in control. You cancel it tomorrow, the next day, next week, whenever. Um, but until you tell me to stop, I'm going to continue trying to sell it. They're like, great, I can cancel any time. Cool. Put it on MLS for two years. At the end of that two years, extend it another two years. I've had listings for three or four years and then boom, they sell. And then that client buys something else all the time. It's a good way to stack listings too. But, um, but like, I, I can tell you so many stories, but like there was a listing we took for 1.2. It was worth 750. We took it for 1.2. Okay. And uh, they have, they came down little by little. This is over the course of two years, little by little, little by little, you know, got down to, you know, 1.2 something, 1.1 something, like all the way down. We got an offer for 800, which was higher than the, than the comp. It was like, this is a good offer. This would be, this would be the new record. And the seller wouldn't take it, continued lowering it. Now he's down to 899, right? And we had an offer for 850 that he turned down, right? So at one point, so like we're almost there. It's been like two years, but we're going to sell that property. You know what I mean? It just comes back to what the seller wants. Um, but to answer your question, like listing appointments and stuff, the way that I look at this is if my mom were trying to sell a house, okay, what are the questions I would ask her? And would I, would I have a listing presentation that I went over with her if it's my mom? Would I do a pre-listing package if it was my mom? How would I treat my mother if she was trying to sell her house? And then I'm like, no, I wouldn't do a listing presentation with a PowerPoint and marketing tips. No, I wouldn't do a pre-listing package. No, I wouldn't do a lot of this stuff that mainstream coaching teaches you to do. It's my mom. And then I started thinking, well, why am I not treating everyone as if they're my mom? That's the way I would want to be treated if I were doing a deal like I'm family. And so that's how I always treated people um, at listing appointments. I never did listing presentations or any of that stuff. I walk in like I'm their son and I'm, I'm asking questions about what's going on in their life. Why are mm -hmm. they thinking about selling this amazing place? If it were me, I wouldn't sell it at all. Why, why the heck are you guys selling this house? Um, and really understand what's going on and relate to them on that deeper level. Um, that's what won me all of my listings was they knew that I was there to help them and I didn't really care about the money. I was just trying to help them um, at the end of the day. So if they asked me what my commission was, they didn't really know me that well. And they were interviewing three agents and they said, what's your commission? I'd say lower than anybody else's. They're like, <laughs> what does that mean? I'm like, well, normally it's six, but if you find somebody lower, let me know. Then what happens? They interview the other agents. The other agent said, I'll do it for five. They're like, all right, we'll think about it. They call me. Now I'm in the driver's seat because instead of it just popping up on MLS for five and me being like, oh, I lost it. Now I can say, yeah, I'll do it for 4.9. And now all of a sudden I have the listing. You know how many listings I took for 4.9? How many millions of dollars I made off 4.9? It's insane. Nobody says you can't do 4.9, 4.99, 4, whatever. I mean, the lawsuit happening right now. <laughs> I, did, did you take the hit or did you share the hit with, with your No, RMI? no, no. I always gave the agents two and a half. Never went below two and a half. I got, if I get six, I'm three, three and three. If I'm, if I'm five or more, it's split 50-50. If I'm under five, they get two and a half, I get the rest. For me, any listing agent that takes more than the buyer agent is a thief. <laughs> so so you guys. What's that? Okay, y'all are on the same page because some people like 
turn on me all of a sudden. And they're like, oh, my God, listing agent deserves more because of all this stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Would you rather have buyers or listings, ma'am? And she's like, listings. I'm like, well, wh why? Because it's easier. It's fun. It's exciting. It's other people are doing all the work and they're getting less money. It's like the buyer agents are the listing agents peasants or something. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's equal playing field. Buyers, agents, in my mind, work just as hard. I'm not going to say they work harder. I'm going to say they work just as hard. And they deserve equal pay. And I always paid them more if I had to. We we do have an agent that will occasionally, not in our group, but put up a buyer's um, pay for like 1.5%. Mm -hmm. Or one. <laughs> or one, Yes. Yeah. So I, it'd be hard to tell somebody in our area that we would always be the lowest. Oh no, he's, you mean, he's getting no, he's no, no, no. What, what do you, what, what do you, what do you, what, what, what's the deal there though? What um, well, what's the total? What's on, on that deal that you're talking about? What's the total commission? Six. It's I'm sure it's six. Yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about then? He's getting six percent. The he's giving the buyer's agent one percent or one and a half percent. Yeah, so, so, that so what? But the total is six. So, what would they have yeah. to do with the total commission of the seller saying I'll, I'm lower than everybody? Right. I don't know. I was just. I think Andrew was maybe thinking he was getting a two percent listing or something. I'm talking about yeah. the total commission. Yeah, I was thinking he was taking a lower commission. I did not realize he was. And Angela, let me let me clarify for you, since I don't believe you quite. Maybe some of you didn't catch this. I say I'm lower than anybody else. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, normally six or five and a half or whatever I want to say. But if you find somebody cheaper, let me know. I didn't say, let me know and I'll beat it. I said, let me know, which means I'll look at it. And if it's three for both sides, I'm not going to do that deal. But if it's five and I can do 4.9, sure. So it's like, let me know. And, and, and in so many words, I'll look at the situation and see what I think. See what I'm saying? I'm not committing myself to taking a listing at 2.9% um, for both sides. I'm not committing myself to that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm willing to go lower than just about anybody else. Let me take a look at it. When you're, when you're up against other agents, right? If it's past clients, longtime clients, they're going to give you whatever you want. They're just going to sign the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So what do you ask for from the person that they're speaking to on um, like another agent, what would you be asking for to see? To see what? Like another listing contract for them or for like, what? do you just take their word for it? Like, oh, I absolutely. Found someone that's really it. absolutely. I'm going to take their word for yes. it. Absolutely. Why would I, why would I double check that? Well, you're saying that you're going to review something like I'll take a look at it. Yeah. They, they can just tell me. Okay. If they're lying, then, you know, they're a piece of shit. <laughs> um, you know? those, if right? they're lying they're a piece of shit they got me for point whatever percent <laughs> and they'll go to hell you know i don't i don't know what to say like i i'm not gonna That's call right. people i'm not gonna call people a liar just i'm not gonna be like oh i have to double check you because i think you're a liar i'm not gonna do that you know um thinking like a principal broker here if ricky's gonna post this on the internet we need to have a disclaimer here that Commissions are not fixed. They're ne fully negotiable. Uh, <laughs> it's up to the seller to offer a buyer's agent commission if they wish to or not. Well, right? I think I think I clarified that pretty well too. You know, yeah. like talking yeah. about I'll go lower. Uh, you know, I choose what um, the buyer agent's going to get. I'll put in a listing agreement. Um, that's all some really weird stuff that's uh, that's going on up there in uh, Missouri right now. Missouri. What's that? Do I need a Red Bull? <laughs> <laughs> no. I said they must be miserable. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish to God I was a fly on the wall in there, dude. I swear to God. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the Illinois one. I plan on going to the court case on the more the Mueller court case trial. I hope you plan on being as direct as you are in normal life. <laughs> What's that? But I hope you plan on being as direct as you are in regular life up there. <laughs> I'm the same person everywhere you see me in person, on a Zoom, on stage, online. I'm the same person. Um, I absolutely do not doubt this. <laughs> what's that? I said I don't doubt this. I, uh, I've i actually been covering the uh, trial day by day, uh, every day. I've been covering all the notes and everything going on in court. 
I've been covering that and giving my two cents on it every day. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Where do you do that? Is that on your TikTok or Instagram or? It's on my YouTube. Yeah, you guys Let's, see. Let's see. Let me think about the best place to send you guys. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Here you go. Text me at this number. This would probably be the best. Text me right here and put your contact information. I'll send you the 30 day, uh, the 30 listing challenge. And I have a call. Um, I'm doing a coaching call in two hours. I'm doing a coaching call in two hours. Just I'm doing a call every two weeks on the 30 listing challenge. The 30 listing challenge can consist of, um, direct mail, handwritten notes that I've made millions on sharing that, uh, cold calling for sale by owners expired and also social media. That's the 30 listing challenge activities. I've got agents that are um, on track to do, to get 30 listings. And some people are like, Oh, you know, I've only got five listings my whole life. I'm not going to get 30 listings in the next 90 days. But after you watch, uh, watch this, you'll be like, Oh, okay. I can get 30 listings. I just finished watching that. Yeah. And that's going to be started next week, Monday. Already started writing the letters. Yeah. Do you have like a time blocking schedule that you do with all this or is that all included in all your different trainings and such? Yeah, it's, it's in there. Um, uh, so, you know, real estate agents, we have a real hard time being consistent. The perfect schedule for an agent is as followed. Eight o'clock, you're making notes on your business. You go through your emails, text messages, your schedule, and you map everything out on a sheet of paper, everything you're working on and what your schedule is for the day. 8.15, you go to the MLS hot sheet. Um, You go to the MLS hot sheet and look at all new listings, closed deals, pending deals. You scan through all that. So your fingers on the pulse of the local market and you got all that. Um, Do it every day. Look at the new listings and the new market data every day. Uh, Then at 8.30, we're going to figure out who we're calling for the day. We're going to figure out who we're calling, get the data, get the phone numbers, do the research, everything we need. By 9 o'clock, we're dialing. Listen, this could be uh, Zillow leads, uh, Facebook leads, cold calls, uh, past clients. Uh, I don't care who it is. If you're not talking to people, you're not going to do deals. This is your job. 9 o'clock, we're dialing. 9 to 12, we're on the phone, back to back to back, building more relationships, building deeper relationships. 12 o'clock lunch. From 1 o'clock on is marketing and appointments. Make your videos, do your SEO, your blog, your website, your whatever you do for marketing, your handwritten letters, whatever you're doing. Do it after lunch and, and or if you have any appointments. If you have an appointment during the day, like to show property at 10, try to push it off till 1. Say, hey, I have a meeting. Can we do it at 1? They're like, yeah, sure, most of the time. Then you can make your calls and still hit the meeting. If they're like, no, 10 o'clock is the only time I can do it, be like, cool, I can move some stuff around, I'll be there. And then just miss the call session that day. It's okay, guys, to miss a call session to go show a property or write a contract or go to a listing appointment. You know what I mean? But days you don't have that, you should be on the phone. It's your job. Did you give us the phone number to text you with yeah. our contact? I Okay, it must be in, it's in the chat. Okay, thanks. Sorry. What's up? Oh, I had missed the phone number in the chat. Sorry, it was my mistake. Let's see. Let me, I'll put this here too. This is the Zoom link. I didn't, I didn't even see the number the, yet. This is a Zoom link. This That's a Zoom link I'll be on in two hours doing a coaching session. There'll be like 500 plus agents there. Okay. You guys need anything else today? Not another week of you. <laughs> What's that? An agent said she just wants you to come in for another week in a row. <laughs> Like you, you didn't get enough yelling, yelling at. <laughs> no, we want more. We that crave it. Mild. <laughs> I just love getting abused. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks All a lot, right. Ricky, for uh, for taking the time. Valuable stuff. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure, guys. Yeah, My pleasure. Thanks. Let me thank know you, if there's anything I can do to help you. Maybe you guys will be on the coaching call later. Shoot me a text. That way you can keep up with all the trainings and stuff and just reach out anytime. The best place to get me is uh, Instagram. Just DM me there, answer all my uh, messages. So you guys go crush it. All right. Thank you. Thank you.